Barry and the Storm Barry had been working on an O&B branch line for some time, but soon the tracks were repaired. He and the workmen also restored the tracks between Ballyhoo and Norrenby, a small seaside town on the east of Sodor. Barry loved it here. The seaside station was beautiful and everyone was friendly towards the tender engine. When his job was finished, Barry spoke to his owner, Sir Robert Norrenby. This line is wonderful, he said. I wish I could run this line all the time. I agree, said the Earl of Sodor. Me and my family have lived here for generations. But you weren't brought to run the branch line. You're going to travel Britain on rail tours. I'm sorry, old boy. Barry was upset. He had fallen in love with this line. Later, Barry arrived at Tidmouth Yard and found his two friends. Arthur and Wester. They saw he was upset and asked him what was wrong. I love the Norman B line, Barry explained. Don't get me wrong, I'm looking forward to the rail tours, but I wish I could stay on this branch line. I understand, said Arthur. But Sir Tom Hatt says that the line isn't very busy, only in the summer time with the summer tourists. It doesn't need an engine full time. I know, replied Barry. Suddenly, they heard the rumble of thunder in the sky. They looked up to see the sky filled with dark gloomy clouds. Just like a storm's coming to the island, said Wester. I better get back to my branch line, said Arthur worriedly. Iris will need my help if it's a fierce one. Understood, said Barry, and watched his friend roll away. Soon Barry was on his way back to the O&B line with a goods train. While the strong winds were blowing stronger and the rain poured down. We can't stay out here much longer, said Barry's driver. It's not safe anymore. I agree, Barry yelled. And he sped up to go as quickly and as safely as possible. The storm was so awful that the clouds blocked out the sun and made it very dark. Then Barry noticed something ahead. It was the junction at Quoven's Gate that split the main line and the Norrenby branch line tracks. On the main line, Barry and his crew could see that a landslide had fallen onto the main line tracks. The line's blocked, cried Barry. We have to head back and warn everybody. Barry sped back to the nearest signal box as fast as he could. When he reached it, his driver told the signalman, I'll stop all trains at once. Just then his telephone rang. Hello? I see. Hold on. What's wrong? asked Barry's driver. Wester was pulling a passenger train from Vickerstown. He's already hit the mudslide. He's still on the tracks and his passengers are all white. But they're stuck and there's no engines at Vickerstown to help them. We can, shouted Barry. The Normanby branch line reaches Vickerstown. I can go and help. Go quickly, said the signalman. I'll inform the controller and the emergency services. So his driver climbed quickly back into the cab and Barry set off down the Normanby tracks. At Ballyhoo station, Barry left his trucks at the station and continued on his way. The signalman at Vickerstown Junction was waiting for him. He quickly changed the points and Barry went tender first down the main line. They found Wester and his passenger train. Wester was stuck in the mudslide. He was trying to get out but his wheels couldn't grip the muddy wet rails. His passengers were both worried and scared. Are you alright Wester? Barry asked worriedly. I'm fine, he answered. I can still feel the rails under my wheels, but we must help the passengers. I'll get you out. Barry's driver coupled Barry to the back of the train, while the fireman spread sand underneath Barry's wheels. Then Barry began to pull, and with one mighty pull, Barry pulled Wester out of the mud. Thank you, said Wester. You can thank me after we help the passengers, 
said Barry. They then rolled back towards Vickers Town. The giant storm continued on the island, but Barry and Wester didn't stop until they arrived back at Vickers Town Station. When they arrived back at the platform, the passengers charged out of the coaches. They cheered and thanked Barry and his crew. The station master spoke to Wester's crew. You have permission to take your train down the Normanby tracks. The passengers were glad that they could still get home and they climbed back into the coaches. Wester thanked Barry one more time and then he set off. Barry was too tired to think of anything else and he was allowed to stay at Vickers Town Shed. It took all night but the storm finally passed. In the morning Barry looked out of the shed. Water and puddles were everywhere. He also saw the fat controller and Sir Normanby. Barry, we're very proud of you, said Sir Normanby. You saved Wester and his passengers from that storm last night. I just did what I hoped any engine would have done, answered Barry. What you did last night was a brave rescue, added Sir Topham Hatt. As a reward, you can have a new coat of paint. Would you like a repaint? Thank you very much, sir. That would be an honour, sir. But can I keep my black paintwork, please? Certainly, the controller replied. And we've got more news for you, said the Earl. Sir Tom Hatt here has agreed that the Normanby branch line needs extra help during the summer. You'll still do your whale tours and you're more than welcome to come and help out on this branch line in summer. Oh, thank you. Barry was so happy he thought he'd fly off the tracks. From that day, Barry has travelled most of Britain on his rail tours, telling his stories and meeting lots of preserved engines. And every summer, he returns to Sodor to help with the extra tourist trains on the Normanby line. As for Wester, he stayed on Sodor until Gordon was repaired. He then had to return to York. But the Fat Controller and all the engines of Sodor have said he is welcome to come back and help any time. Barry, Wester and Arthur are good friends, even though they work on different parts of the UK. But they look forward to the next time they meet again. Barry enjoys his new life now and loves his nickname he's gained, Barry the Rescue Engine. <laughs>